Hello and welcome to Let Me Boy to Sleep. Um, my name's Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Can you just relax? Just lay down. I've got my iPad on my f- on my lap, which is throwing him right off because he wants to sit on it. <laughs> the la- the iPad that is. If I didn't have anything on my la- lap. Stop it, just calm down. Oh, hope you're all well. Um, today is the Sunday news. Sunday news. Get that, no, I don't want you can't. Don't. This is the second day in a row that he's been like all over the place. Calm down. This is the, the no, stop trying to. <laughs> oh dear you're such a good boy you're so you are funny you do make me laugh so hey hey I hope you well I think I've already said that Eventually he will calm down. So what I've decided, I've just posted it on my Facebook group, which is Jason Newland's Boring Group. I'm going to be starting to do a weekly, another weekly Let Me Boy to Sleep. Uh, like I currently do the Q&A Friday, every Friday. I'm now going to do a Monday one. And it's Monday's Boring Objects. So... What I'm going to do, get off my good little, oh you want a, t- you want a tummy tickle, that's what he wants, he wants a tummy tickle, okay, tummy tickle, tummy tum tum, tummy tum tum tickle, sorry, um, I'm talking to Vinnie by the way, so, I, I posted on my YouTube, on my Facebook page, the the group, Jason Newland's Boring Group. If you're not on there, please join. To ask any suggestions for tomorrow's Monday's Boring Objects. Now what I'm thinking I might do is if I get a, a few people suggest ideas and then I'll put a poll up. Maybe, uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe I could do that sort of every week. Ask for some suggestions, and then I'll put a poll up, and whoever, whatever gets the most ticks or clicks or whatever gets that will be the subject or the object that I choose to talk about. And then whatever's left over from the week before, I'll add that to the list the, the next week. Yeah, that makes sense. I think so. Anyway, this is the Sunday Papers. So, okay, part of, I I guess you, if you're a regular listener, you'd know that I try and steer away from like, you know, serious stuff, if at all possible, generally, unless I can find a way to make it funny. So, on this occasion, uh, today, it's Sunday today, isn't it? Oh, okay. Uh, unless I can make it funny. So, I'm going to go through the papers. It might take a while to find anything that's actually... In- Get off the laptop! Serious. Vinny, just calm down. It really throws him off. If I had the microphone on the other side and I was sitting on the normal side of the city, I wonder if, I don't know, I think he'd still be all up and all over the place because he doesn't know what to do. Because this is kind of new. Even though I've been making recordings for a couple of weeks now, sitting on the sofa, it's still kind of new to him. Because all of, you know, before that, for the last... Oh, nearly two years that I've had him, I've been sitting at a table doing it. 
and he's been that's enough now down down not off the chair no just lay down lay down now that's it good boy good boy really it's bad enough i've got to wake up with your bum facing me oh, come on just, just, just lay down it's really, stop it now that's enough that's enough gosh blimey man don't you flip your ears at me flip your ears flap your ears so I have to find a way for him to just keep still for a second <laughs> this is what he used to be like when I first got him so much energy run and now <laughs> stop it <laughs> Ow. Vinny, calm down, calm down. Oh, blimey. Okay, so before I... Oh, he seems to calm... But he's only happy if his tail is spread across the keyboard. Oh, dear. So, what I've done, I actually did a, I went on to ChatGPT, which is something that I use fairly regularly. I use it to just, that's it now, that's it. One, two, <laughs> stop it. It was so calm before I started the recording. <laughs> Do you know, here's a weird thing. His mum, who used to have him before me, um, she told me that he used to sit in the, the passenger seat of the car while she was driving, and he just sat there. Can you imagine if I had a car and I was in there and I'd put... He wouldn't sit still. He doesn't know. It's, he just, I guess, better behaved with her than he is with me. <laughs> guess because I respect her <laughs> thanks mate so what I did I wanted to go on to went to chat GPT, chat GPT just to the reason I want chat GPT for a few reasons one of the reasons is because AI is the future well, it's the present as well, but it's the future. And I wanted to learn to use at least some of the AI stuff. And ChatGPT is one of the main ones. But there's a lot of other ones. Claude, Devon, uh, the Google stuff, the you, you name it, Apple. There's loads of stuff. But I just don't have enough time to be going through everything. So I've, I kind of get my head around ChatGPT, and I use it for basic stuff, but it's quite a good search engine. And they've got a new model that's come out, which is the O1, ChatGPT O1, which is, it's very thorough. It takes time to think, you know, of the answer to the question. And also, I was getting it prepared for tomorrow's choose trivia tuesday um, a tuesday's trivia tuesday rather oh, that's another a weekly thing i'm going to be doing trivia tuesday on tuesday and i was thinking about maybe looking up some car trivia facts so i went on to chat gpt and it gave me 50 50 facts or trivia trivia things and then i I went on and then I said, now fact check that information. And it came back. Quite a few of the inf bits of information were correct, but some were not. And it corrected it. So that's pretty good going. Anyway, um, calm down, Vin, now. That's it. That's enough now. That's enough now. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. So... All I thought I'd do is um, ask about me. 
it's really I sort of thought because obviously I'm huge ego and all that. It's just nice to have a huge something. Uh, tell me about Jason Newland. Newland. So that's what I typed in, and it said it fought for eight seconds. I actually had a good think for eight seconds, and it came up. As of my knowledge, cut off in October 2023. Ah, oh, okay. So it's the knowledge cut off only goes back to last year. There are at least two notable individuals named Jason Newland. Dr. Jason Newland, he is a paediatric infectious disease specialist and a professor at Washington University School of Medicine. Finney! Calm down. Calm down. That's a good boy. Calm down. Uh, he focuses on antimicrobial stewardship, aiming to improve the use of antibiotics for children. So he's he's well known worldwide, and yeah. So that that's him. Number two is. Me, me, <laughs> me. It's probably just got a weird name, that's why, but it's me, Jason Newland, the hypnotist. He is a British hypnotist and content creator who produces hypnosis and relaxing recordings. He shares his work through various... His tail is spread all over. He's now just collapsed of exhaustion. His tail's on the keyboard. Uh, uh, he shares his work through various online platforms, including YouTube and podcasts, aiming to help people with issues like stress, anxiety and insomnia. If you have a specific question, you'd like more details. So I said, uh, tell me about Let Me Bore You to Sleep. I'm quite, I find it quite funny, some of the things it wrote. Let Me Bore You to Sleep is a podcast series created, created by Jason Newland a British hypnotist and content creator. The podcast is designed to help listeners fall asleep by providing long-form, monotonous and soothing audio recordings. Okay, long-form. Fair enough. Soothing audio recordings. That's, yeah, good. What's that little word that's in the middle there? Monotonous. Do you really think that I'm monotonous? Do you? Do you think I'm monotonous? <laughs> oh dear, I'm not sure if I like that word. In each episode, Jason speaks in a calm and unhurried manner, often sharing mundane, mundane stories. Mund when have my stories been mundane? Or gentle ramblings without any stimulating content. So nothing I ever say is stimulating. Brilliant. Wonderful. <laughs> the idea is to create an environment where the mind can relax. Making it easier for listeners to drift off to sleep. His approach leverages the concept that a consistent dull narrative can help quiet the mind and reduce anxiety or overthinking at bedtime. It seems to know more about what I do than me. This podcast is part of Jason Newland's broader work in producing relaxation, blah, 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 blah. Let Me Bore You to Sleep is available on multiple platforms. If you're interested, so I just did, can you find some reviews? Nope. Does his pod does does his podcast work? It says his podcast, let me pull you to sleep, is designed to help listeners fall asleep by providing soothing, monotonous narration. The podcast leverages techniques commonly used in relaxation and sleep aids, such as gentle storytelling and calm speech patterns, to create a restful auditory environment commonly used so not very unique me very common <laughs> while i don't have access to specific user reviews or scientific studies assessing its effectiveness many people find that listening to such content can help help quiet the mind and ease the transition into sleep 
the effectiveness of the podcast can vary from person to person depending on the individual preferences and sleep patterns. If you're considering trying a podcast, it might be best beneficial to listen to a few episodes to see if it suits you. And check listeners' feedback on podcast platforms to provide insights into others. Right, better. So I said, I just said, how popular is the podcast? While I don't have access to specific listener statistics for Let Me Boy to Sleep by Jason New Land, the podcast has been available on major platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify and Google Podcasts. Its presence on these widely used services suggests that it has reached a considerable audience seeking assistance with sleep and relaxation. The podcast has developed a dedicated follower a following. The podcast has developed a dedicated following of listeners who appreciate Jason Newland's unique approach to helping people fall asleep through soothing and monotonous storytelling. Monotonous storytelling. I like to think of it as mildly exciting, but hey, user reviews and ratings can be blah, 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 blah. I said, is, is the podcast in the top 10% of sleep podcasts? I don't have specific blah, 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 blah. That doesn't have the for the most accurate. Um, but it is available on whatever, so it doesn't know. What does he talk about? So, this is a question. Apparently, I do know a bit about me. So, it says, uh, Jason Newland talks about a wide array of mundane and everyday topics with the primary goal of helping listeners relax and fall asleep. His episodes often feature rambling monologues. Rambling monologues? Really? <sighs> Jason speaks in a slow, calm, and monotonous... Is that word again? Monotonous tone, deliberately allowing his thoughts to meander. Meander? <laughs> meander? Oh, that's a weird word. This unstructured style helps create a soothing auditory background that doesn't demand active attention. Now it's saying you don't even need to listen to me. I'm not saying anything worth listening to. Not that, not re I'm not sure if this is really a compliment. I'm not sure. Everyday experience. So this is the next bit. He might recount simple activities from his day, share memories from his past, or describe ordinary events in great detail. Topic can Topics can range from discussing the weather to talking about household chores. Household. Have I ever talked about a household chore? I'll, I'll, I'll go even further. Have I ever even done a household chore? So he started barking then, so I'll start again. Um, everyday experiences. Okay, right. Detailed descriptions. By focusing on trivial details, such as describing the layout of a room or the steps involved in making a cup of tea, he provides content that is intentionally unexciting to prevent stimulating a listener's mind. I'm exciting. I mean, God. <sighs> Gentle storytelling. Occasionally he might tell simple stories without dramatic plots or conflicts, maintaining the peaceful and undisturbing narrative flow. Well, without dramatic plot, my stories are full of, it, I don't know, something. Now then he's chasing a fly. Soothing repetition. Jason often uses repetitive language patterns and phrases to enhance the hypnotic and relaxing effect of his speech. <sighs> The overarching theme is to bore the listener just enough to help them drift into sleep. 
the content is intentionally non-stimulating and lacks engaging elements. I'm engaging. Am I not engaging? Like suspense or complex ideas. I talk, I'm a very, I talk about complex things. By providing a consistent and gentle auditory environment. The podcast aims to quiet the mind and ease the listener into a restful state. Uh, um, how old is it? How old is the podcast, I asked. As for my knowledge, cut off in October 2023, says chat GPT, 01 preview. Let Me Boy to Sleep by Jason Newland has been running for several years. While I don't have the exact start date, the podcast began around 2018 or earlier. Jason Newland has produced numerous episodes since then, constantly providing content aimed at helping listeners relax and fall asleep through his soothing and monotonous storytelling. I can't believe that they're using words like monotonous. I thought my stories were interesting. Am am I the only one? Maybe. Oh well. So that that was that in that. (laughs) That was what I wanted to talk to you about. So the Sunday newspapers. Sunday. So we're just gonna. I'll do the UK papers. It won't take me long to get through it. So I'll start with the the Sunday people. So here we go. Now ban mobiles in all. So they're looking to ban in mobile phones in schools. The um. The we've got a new government in the UK of England, and they are making many, many, many changes. Very quickly. They're, yeah, they they they're really kind of out to. Um, I'm not quite sure what they're out to do, but they're doing something. So, da, 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 da. so what else is there? The daughter of Britain's Got Talent judge Amanda Holden shows she is a model student as she makes a catwalk debut in between her studies. Um. I don't really know why that's in the newspaper. Yeah, I guess she, I suppose she wants to be famous like her mum, maybe. I don't know. Fred's French Kisses. Fred's is... Uh... Right, okay. Apple says Air... This is cool. Eye hearing aids. AirPods could become the hearing aid for the future. Manufacturer Apple has claimed. The giant tech says it is adding groundbreaking software to its wireless earphones so that it will soon double as clinic-grade aids. That's brilliant. That is, isn't it? How cool is that? I don't think it'll be long before the same will happen with the glasses as well. You get Apple glasses and they will just adjust to what your eyes need. You know, automatically. Uh, So yeah, it's it's amazing, this, this technology. As it is, you may not be aware of this actually, there is a way with the headphones. There's a setting. I forget what it is now. But there's a setting on your phone, and you can magnify the sound. So you can put your headphones in, and you can hear more clearly things from further away. Anyway, it's um, I think I do forget what the the setting is because I did it because I wanted to test it out a while back. So, just by having your, you know, th- these are little, the bud things that stick in your ear. It's no good for me because I think my, I think my ear holes are too big, because I just keep falling out. So I didn't like them. 
with the ones with wires they kept falling out as well but at least they were on a wire but the ones without wire although they're good they just I don't know I mean but thinking about it you can now get some of the hearing aids are so tiny they just slip into the ear so maybe that's how the the future hearing pod things will be so yeah that's really cool it may reduce stigma no one minds wearing smart airpod earphones airpod pro costs around 230 while nhs hearing aids are free others can cost thousands airpods cost 230 pound I've had an AirPod before, it didn't cost nowhere near that. Mind you, it was quite a few years ago, but I'm sure they weren't more than about 50 quid or something. Blimey, I guess I didn't have the pro ones. So, not going to read that one. So yeah, they're just talking about getting rid of mobile phones from schools. Um, what's this next bit? This is Pete Wicks. Makeup artist claim, okay, right. Join Slim World for free. Why is that advert there? Stop it. Stop putting adverts for Slimming World for me. That's like a Slimming World, for those that don't know, is the same kind of thing as. My stomach's gurgling. What's the other thing? Slim. Slimming World. There's another one, isn't it? You can buy their products. Slim Fast. That's it. Slim Fast. Missile. Okay. <laughs> Not going into that one either. We'll watch. And. So Keir Starmer, our president, our current prime minister, rather, visited uh, the American president, Joe Biden, and they exchanged gifts. Apparently, our prime minister gave the president some ten down and st some ten down and street mugs. In return, President Biden handed Mr. Starmer a bowl with gold wrapping bearing the presidential seal. What rubbish gifts. Some mugs and a bowl, a soup bowl. Just, just, I just see like a bit of a crap gift. Just, just me, just maybe, maybe it's good, but, mm. Motorbike, uh, a huge, the lowest fixed energy tariff you can keep. Oh. Taylor, the next Swift, swear it's Taylor Swift, is already planning her next live gigs. Yeah. Is so she come could come back to the UK in two thousand twenty six. Now. If you can sell tickets for a concert tour two years ahead of when you actually even get there before, you know, then you can do no wrong, can you? Because that commitment is there from the fans. So when you release an album, the fans are going to buy the album. They're going to buy the T-shirts. They're going to buy all that stuff because they've invested the next two years in you ahead of time it's very clever that's where some of the bands in they they really got their they figured it out now but there was a time when some bands they like really they did well but for, for a short period of time and they didn't have the longevity because there was no planning ahead they didn't plan ahead. Like Bros, for example. Bros were huge, biggest band in the country for a while. Bros. 
BROS. And they sold out Wembley and everything. But if they'd have sold tickets for Wembley the next year and booked it for five or six nights the next year, they would have sold tickets. So instead of the next year when people weren't buying their records anymore, all those, you know, 200,000 people or 400,000, half a million people or a million people ever that had booked, paid for tickets a year ahead or 18 months ahead to see them are going to go and buy their records because they've invested. They're, you know, they're, they're invested in the group. They, yeah, I don't know. I know what I'm saying, I think. <laughs> I, I think I, I, I think I do. Uh, Oasis has been coming back. So that's that's kind of been going on a bit. There's all these things about prices of tickets. Um, so I don't... I'd go and see them, but I'd want to be inside because if they were at the they're at Wembley I think so if I was going to go and see anyone really I'd want to be in one of those you know where the I don't know what they called like the high up and they've got the glass and you can watch down and you can be in the warm and stuff like that that's what I'd want I'd want to be have a bit of quiet <laughs> You might as well just watch on TV if you're going to do that, though, I guess. But now I'm aging... Did you think... Uh, now I'm aging at Amazon Prime View, True Color, James Lubbock, Britain's My Man, Father Kind Okay. It's time for Harry... Lib laughs. We stayed uh, in... I'm just looking try and find some stuff and I can't seem to find anything that I can talk about Sunday people get your part so this is the Sunday people by the way I should have told you that Sunday people no, 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 no. Talk to your kids. Ask how they feel. Yep. Uh, no. Oh, cruise. Nile cruise itinerary. Day one. Transfer. F transfer from Hergado. Hergad. Hergo. Hergada. Hergada. To Luxor and cruise checked in. Check in. Day two. Transfer from a Hergadar to Duck. That doesn't sound like a particularly good idea. Because what's Hergadar? What is that? So you've got to go to Hergadar to start from. The Nile, I mean, what's that? It's near, it's near France, isn't it? So why why you got to travel that far away? Explore Karnak and Luxor temples on optional tours. Day three, visit Valley of Kings and sail to F F Edfu. Day four, tour Edfu Temple. Sail to Kom Ombo. Continue to Aswan. Get to me, Aswan? Wow. When did you get to see any of the other animals in Narnia? Uh, day five, visit Aswan Dam, unfinished obelix, obi obelix, 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 obelix. That's what's his name from. Ah, oh, what's his name? Oh, oh, the Romans, not the Ro the Romans. Do you remember the the the? The cartoon. And he always used to have like feathers in his head. He had a helmet with feathers in it. Not Phoenix. Felix. 
Mm. Obelix was his friend. Day six, take an optional tour. Obelix was really strong. What was his name? It's going on in my head. Take an optional tour to Abu Simbel. Return to Edfu. Day seven, sail back to Luxor for an overnight stay. What's the point going somewhere? I can't even say the words. Oh, this is a better one. 14 nights cruise and stay. Return flights from leading UK airport. Seven nights, five star deluxe cruise on full board. Seven nights, five star hotel stay on all exclusive. All ground transfers, all airport taxes. 699 per person. I wonder how much it is for just one person. I mean, I know it says 699. Now they charge extra, don't they? If it's just one person, they charge. It doesn't seem fair. Doesn't seem fair. England boss Lee Carsley made a big impression at his old school by taking them a life size cardboard cutout of himself. Hmm. Oh, it was a jokey gift. Okay, cool. I was going to say it sounds like a look. Huh. Uh, okay, let's get out of that one. Oh, news and features. No filter with Lauren Armstrong and Janine Yacoub. Yacoub. So the National Television Awards was on. We are rubbing see, behind the scenes, rubbing shoulders with TV A lists at the star studded after party to get all the gross, all the goss rather. Fresh from his sixth NTA win for Mrs. Brown Boys, Brendan Carroll was on sparkling form as he celebrated the gong with his wife Jennifer Gibney and pretty much the entire family. He's now based in Florida, where he and much of his clan have taken over a street of multi-million pound homes. A source close to Brendan, who will be 69 on Tuesday. Wow, I didn't realise he was that age. Um, said that when the time comes for Mrs Brown to exit stage left, he'd like to film a fly on the wall documentary about his family life in the US. Um... Wow, she owns an entire street. It's really weird, just used to see him dressing up as uh, Mrs. Brown. Seeing Davina McCall received the Special Recognition Award on Wednesday was one of our highlights of the year. We haven't had a very good year, have you? Ooh, that was cruel. That was a bit spicy. Um... I don't know. I used to like, well, I don't dislike her, but I used to like Davina McCall. She did the Big Brother. Oh, Big Brother starts again. I think it's, I keep thinking the 8th. Everything's on the 8th of October, but it's not. I mean, not everything can be on the 8th of October because that'd be weird. But Big Brother starts in October. There's the Bivol um, fight. Like the cruiserweight, like light heavyweight fight, which is the part of the Riyadh season, which is in um, Riyadh, it's in uh, du Dubai. Better be if it's fighting Bivol, and there's uh, a lot of other big fights, but that's on. Also, I go to a dentist. Also, I start my degree course. So that's four things that are happening, happening in October. Big Brother, the Bivol fight, the dentist going to and starting the degree. There might even be something else that I can't think of. Bear mate give Robbie sorted. Thing is, I be. I don't know what that was. My fury overpowered Tommy. Defending the fox. 
Dragged Sarah's on us. Sarah Davis took on the Great Northern Run. Okay. There's a lot of... I'm quite surprised at this. There's a lot of uh, adverts for books in here. This is like a... Yeah, it's the third... Third, at least the third advert for books. Hmm. I didn't know they had adverts for books anymore. Men in Black star Will Smith poses with Ferrari mechanics ahead of today's Grand Prix in Baku. And after Charles Leclerc's Italian triumph, it looks like Will wants Ferrari to win again in the Azerbaijanese capital. I don't know what that is all about. Um, splash out on a flat. A luxury flat with its own private pool and terrace has gone on sale for a huge £80 million. The pad, which also comes with a 24-hour concierge, spa facilities and valet parking, is in high-class Knightsbridge, central London. Estate agents say the luxury penthouse is one of the most extraordinary you know some people say extraordinary as an extraordinary properties in the capital with a 10 percent it's only a 10 percent deposit a mortgage at 5.15 percent would cost 477 thousand pounds a month it's not bad is it it's a steal, almost a steal. And it's only 10% deposit, so that's only 8 million. 8 million deposit, and then 427,000 a month. If I wasn't busy doing this, I might actually uh, look into it myself. But I'm busy, I'm doing this, so I can't. In nearby Hyde Park, where neighbours include Tom Cruise... A two-story flat is on sale. <laughs> a two-story flat is on sale for 175 million. I mean, I know that there's actually a TV show called Location, 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 and that's true, isn't it? I mean, this flat. If this was in Knightsbridge, it'd probably be worth about 10 million. So it's ridiculous. Seriously, it's not. It's just because something's worth they, they pay ten million doesn't mean it's a big property. It's or five million. It's, it's to be millions. Yeah, you could sell this flat if I owned it, which I don't, and move to a different part of the country, and end up getting a house, like a three bedroom house with a garden. Or you could sell a sick bedroom house with a massive garden in an, another part of the country and move to London and struggle to buy one bedroom flat with that money. It's very, very weird, very strange. Oh, look, 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 look. On this day, September the 15th, 1980. That's what I could do part of my trivia day thing, couldn't I? Or I could do it on this day thing. Go through history on this day. Not you know, so whatever day it is, fourteenth of March or whatever, and I could go through history. But then I'd have to keep a track of it because otherwise I'd end up repeating myself. Anyway. On this day, September 1980, in love, okay, top 10 singles. Number 10, another one bites the dust. And another one, and another one, another one bites the dust. Hey, I gonna get to you, another one bites the dust. Dreaming from Cliff Richard. Dreaming, dreaming. Uh, Modern Girl by Sheena Easton. I'm a modern girl. 
I'm a modern girl, yeah. What was the one that Sheena recently did that I liked? Nine to f- not nine to five. I did 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 Going to work. Very good, really good song. So, Ashes to Ashes from David Bowie Bowie. Ashes to Ashes. <laughs> good on me to time and Eighth Day by Hazel O'Connor. Eighth Day, I'm Hazel O'Connor. Eighth day, oh yes I am. Eighth day, and anyone remember that one? Then there's the it's start by the Jam. It's a start, it's a start, 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 to the start, start, start. It's a start, it's a start, 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 start. Yeah, I said it was a good one. Master Blaster jamming, Stevie Wonder. Jamming. We going to jam in with you, ooh, ooh. Master Blaster. Um, so yeah, that was number four. It's only love beyond the reef. Elvis Presley, beyond the reef. I don't remember that one. Uh, was that in Blue Hawaii? Maybe. Just sounds like the kind of song that Blue Hawaii would have. I liked Elvis's movies. He didn't. He just shook his head. Nope. I did. One day I'll fly away by Randy Crawford. One day I'll fly away. Fly away. Um, number one is "Feels Like I'm in Love." Kelly Marie. That's another good song, but I can't remember how it goes. Feel like I'm in love. Ooh, ooh I'm in love. Yeah. Ooh. So that was the, the charts on this day in 1980. The charts, I don't know if it still does, but the charts used to come out on a Sunday. Like they'd be initially uh, released on a Sunday, like the, the number one for the week. But then we wouldn't get Top of the Pops till Thursday night. So... When I was a kid, we didn't know what was number one until Thursday. Because we didn't read the newspapers. Brian and our case, so we used to we used to record it. No, no, not Top of the Pops. Um Yeah, I think we used to watch Top of the Pops. So then when we realised it was on I think they used to play it on a Tuesday night on the radio or maybe a Sunday night even, I don't know, or Monday night. But my brother used to record it on the stereo, like on a tape, the the whole of the top 40. And it'd say, don't tell me who's number one. Uh, so, okay. Don't promise you don't tell me who's number one. He'd be going, I think he worked in Tesco's or something, so he wasn't going to be there. He'd work on a Sunday evening, getting the place ready for Monday or something like that, stacking the shelves and that. He was still at school. And I'd say, I won't tell you. And then he'd phone up, like, you know, a couple of hours later. Remember, don't tell me. Remember to record it, didn't you? I said, yeah, it's recording now. Cause it used to last for about three hours. Well, don't don't tell me who it is, who's number one. I said, okay. Then he'd call up like 10 minutes later, who's number one? I'm not telling you. I'll go on. No, I can't tell you. Why can't you tell me? Because it's not been released yet. It's not told us. It. It's still at number 22. <sighs> it's a wind me up. Beef over pub food. High high meal costs deter punters. 
Oh dear. Uh, oh, Harrods is making a vine old profit by selling bunches of grapes for a pricely sixty pound each. Really? So that's three pound per grape. Oh well. I didn't really find that to be the most uh, type. Uh, a tartan and tweed weaver. See, this is why we, this is the good stuff. A tartan and tweed weaver, believed to be Britain's oldest, oldest. So there's no the grammar is not great on this. Needs oldest needs an apprentice oldest needs an apprentice as he is clearly ready to call it a day great grandfather rob is 192 shared his career started his career rather aged just 14 at a textile mill in 1956 and because you know back in them days you didn't, you know, I left school at 15, but that was just because I was the youngest in my year. Or, what well, the youngest or one of them. I didn't manage to look at everyone's birth certificates. But I was, you know, I was nearly a year younger than a lot of the people that were there. Because it was just that cut-off point. So, I just managed to get into the year by being just old enough. So I was, yeah, so I get to school, my birthday is the end of August, I get to school, I start at the beginning of September, and then like maybe a week into September, people would be having their birthdays. So I'd be 13 and they'd be 14. You know, literally within two weeks of me. So I wasn't, yeah. It didn't affect me too much, although I'm still talking about it 50 years later. So I guess it must have had an effect. <laughs> Burko, uh, Kiss Rockers. Nope. Gene's Crazy, Crazy Life. Gene, that's Gene, what's his name in it, from the Black Sabbath or whatever. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh. Okay, right. Oh, Cro Cope. You know, someone I, I did a like a news review in the past, and someone said, "Oh, cause I did the crossword puzzle," and someone mentioned, "Oh, that was good. Should do that more often." I think if I was gonna start. A podcast episode knowing that I was going to do a crossword puzzle I'll probably never start because it I don't find that stuff hoogly easy if I'm honest it's okay if I just sort of come across it and do it but the idea of doing it what the heck sensei is travel new sensation ancient neolithic Gara Bray, dated back to 3180 BC. They don't know how old it is. Why do they make stuff up like that? We know because we we can see how many layers are on the, in the grass and the tree. We know it's a really old tree because you know, all the different layers it has got. No, you're making it up. Stop making stuff up. World's most lucrative. Like, that tree is, is 5,000 years old. No, it's not. It's only been up there for 60 years. Stop lying. No, it's 5,000 years old. No, it's been there for 10 years. It's like, you may have just said it's 60 years a minute ago. I said, I said, I said, 60 years a minute ago. I said, yeah, I know. So, I'm not emotionally affected by this. I, 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 I really don't care. Movies. Oh. Will and Shot. I wanted to do a movie review, but I don't know. Another book. This time, first into action again. 
another gripping edge of the seat right, ride from former Special Forces operator Duncan Falconer. I mean, this is the Sunday people. I didn't think... Um, uh, well, I shouldn't finish that sentence. I just, I just didn't think that. I mean, you won't see those adverts in the Sun. I'm guessing, unless things have changed since I used to read the Sun. That was the only thing I read. Was Mike? Oh no, that's right. oh. I didn't think people even read anymore. According to like a lot of the news, like no one reads, no one reads it. Finny, shush mate, come on, give it a rest. He's got his thing where he just stares at me and makes weird noises like <coughs> just stares. Now he's looking away to prove a point, but he's still, yeah, he's staring again, I know. And your little frown. He's got a permanent frown on. And he's got eyebrows. He's actually got eyebrows, bless him. That's it, lean against the laptop. So there's still stuff on here about AJ is going down. So Daniel Dubois versus Anthony Joshua this coming Saturday. Calm down, mate, it's just a fly. Daniel Dubois is primed to topple Anthony Joshua and take on title, take on the top. <sighs> Do you have to make so much noise? Basically a fly and he's trying to get to it. Anyway, that's, that's Saturday, so that'll be good. I'm looking forward to that and it means I won't have to get up at silly hours of the morning. But it will be... It will be an absolute marathon. Because I think it starts at something like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's in Wembley, but it's going to be... There's a lot of fights on and it's going to be a big, big old day. But it's good. Because, basically... Don't know how many more they're gonna be. How many more of these like huge shows with multiple multi world titles on this, you know, on show or whatever from Dubai, uh, financed by tycoons. Uh, so I don't know how many more there are left before we go back to just normal boxing again. So it's got to make the best of it really for now, I would say. Because I don't think the, I don't think they're even making any money. I mean, the, you know, the, the actual tycoon, what are they, the Dubai Arab um, oil tycoons, they're, they're multi-billionaires. So they're doing it for the love of boxing. And I guess to promote their own country and to promote what they're doing and stuff. But ultimately, I think it's for the love of boxing. So everyone involved is making money. Apart from the audience. Because they're charging or constantly charging people. But, you know, all, all the fighters, all the promoters, they're all getting rich from these uh, big events. But what's happening in, in the same way is the smaller fights have been it's just stopped. There's been hardly anything on the zone, or even hardly anything on Sky Boxing. It's, you know, it's hardly anything. The last two months, maybe longer, there's been very little. There's been an occasional show, but it's been very little. And any big show has all been pay-per-view. And it didn't used to be like that. 
so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. Uh, maybe it'll get back to normal again next year. Hopefully, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. Shall we have a look at the Daily Star? The Daily Star. So, celebrity juice star, TV, <laughs> TV, Lee, my bog was haunted by a ghost. Oh, blimey. Um, so, I apologise for all the noise that he's making. Right, he just made a lot of noise jumping off the settee to get to the fly. So what have we got? Daniel Fun this week. We've got a super moon, apparently. On Wednesday, nationwide, the moon will be near its closest approach to Earth and may look bigger. Vinny, calm down. Uh, what else is there? Daniel Dubois, I've already mentioned that. So, change, change on train operators. Okay. Oh, so this is weird. Here's, here's a funny thing, okay? So, there is a thing, for those that don't know, called Pay Tree Girls, that was a traditional British thing in the, in the tablet, what well, was the sun, mainly the sun, and then the star did it. I think maybe the mirror did it, but not in the same way. And it was partially unclothed. Thing. And then they had a page seven fella, I think, if I remember correctly, later on, like in the eight, late eighties or nineties. Okay, they had a page seller, page seven fella, and I used to look at it. I looked at everything because I used to read the papers. Now today's page three is Billy, but it's now um, they they got away with they deleted the page three semi clothed uh, and now it's kind of bikinis and stuff like that apparently now I, I'm just looking at it for research purposes <laughs> now I'm just looking <laughs> uh, now I'm just uh, it's weird I've got a story about that Anyway, tickets free. Free. Come. Beep, 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 beep. Bill Rod and Roll. Bill Rod and Roll. Billy Joel and Sir Rod Stewart rocked the stage as they performed together for the first time. It's still rock and roll to me, singer 75. And Maggie May, hitmaker 79. No. No way, 79. How can he be 79? How, how, how can Billy Joel be 75 and Rod Stewart be 79? How is that even possible? How, I'm sorry, I just don't, I don't get it. It's just, I don't, I don't just, it's like, no, they don't look like, they, I don't know any 75 or 79 year olds that look like them. I mean, yeah, they don't look 30, but Rod Stewart doesn't look much different than he ever did. He always looked like, he kind of always had that look, didn't he? 
Wow. Good luck to them. Good luck to them. It's uh, with no nuts to play with. Contest fear at Windrex Conquer Supply. The World Conquer Championships are in jeopardy after gals downed horse chestnuts a month early. Is that what they're called? Horse chestnuts? Oh, I didn't know that. So, organisers fear a conquer shortfall after recent winds and cold weather could see the event being abandoned. World Conquer Championship spokesman St. John Burkett said, It looked like a crisis for conquers this year. We're in trouble. We are very worried we won't have enough nuts to play with. Many have fallen far too early and will be no use. It's one thing after another with the weather. There are far fewer conkers left on the trees because they've been, bl <laughs> they've been blown off by the wind which means they're not on the trees anymore and they're on the ground and the October the 13th showpiece affects 250 players and 1,500 fans to Southwick, Southwick Northants with 3,000 nuts needed the 2018 championships were saved when enthusiast <laughs> oh, sorry I, I just read is this how I'm just reading it verte verbatim the 2018 championships were saved when enthusiasts <laughs> Championships were saved. <laughs> oh, when, enth <laughs> when enthusiasts brought conquerors. <laughs> from as far, <laughs> from as far away as Scotland and Cornwall. After, <laughs> after a similar, similar sort of shortage, <laughs> it takes half the page. <laughs> a story <it> takes. <laughs> blowing nuts off a tree <sighs> oh look this is one stores music is a real flop supermarket staff are being driven bonkers by stingy free music playlists workers at Asda are fuming at a decision by management to pump a 20 song playlist of tunes from unsigned artists <laughs> and AI bots through store speakers. Because the tracks are unlicensed, the chain doesn't have to pay royalties on the music. Desperate workers have now launched a petition calling for the mentally draining music to be changed. They have filed an online forum which please to stop torturing them with the tracks. Some ranted that the song choices were literally the worst they had ever heard and said they've got... <laughs> oh dear. Um, I, can, I can get that. I can understand that. 
uh, where did I work where we were just playing Christmas songs Blimey, I can't remember where it was but we were playing Christmas songs all oh no maybe I was just in town yeah that's it I went into town and it was during Christmas like the week before Christmas and you can see the look on the staff's faces having to listen to them don't them say the same 15 songs over and over again you know the, the standard Christmas album and you're like oh baby, Merry Christmas everybody's having fun to the future I mean it's I love the songs but I don't want to listen to them solid for eight hours five days a week for two months I, I couldn't do that so remember that when you go into a, a shop remember the Christmas staff I've had to endure that just be nice be nice to them nice 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 or not up to you I don't care Crush half and oh Hughes, that silly fly keeps hassling me. Vinny, if you're going to catch the fly, catch it and stick it out the window, please. No, oh, he actually heard me. So, okay, I'm just going to go through. So, I've got this is, this is the Daily Star, by the way. And it's kind of the similar to the star the sun rather I think they do a sun on the sun on Sunday it used to be the news of the world and that got shut down so they uh, basically just brought out a newspaper called the sun on Sunday which was just another version of the news of the world really the match chat fell Graham Norton has re revealed that his worst chat show guest ever with both Robert De Niro and Madonna coming up short on the sofa. The TV presenter whose BBC One show returns this month found Hollywood stars De Niro and Kevin Costner boring and snooty, respectively. Graham 61, who's about to embark on a UK tour, promoting his latest book, Frankie, said when Madonna was on we had someone who had painstakingly take uh, um, yeah I don't know something about a, a doll and she didn't like it oh uh, David Williams says yeah Little Britain is no longer aired because it's politically incorrect to David Williams is not happy about that. Uh, just keep it, keep it, yeah, good boy. Get away, flies attacking me now. Um, da -da -da -da. <clears throat> Blimey, I've been talking for too long. It's not even been a long recording. This is uh, Gary Oldman. I'll tell you what. Don't ever get a dog. He's just... He's out to wind me up tonight. He done this. He did this in uh, about a few months ago. A fly stuck around for about three days. He, all he did... So all he did chase that fly around. Okay, something about a thing that I forget. Fort Wyatt, pause a fort. Right, Heidi on World Night. Heidi Clum. Um. Okay. The I don't know why she's on there. She's they're talking about. How 
Oh, she hosted the fifth annual Emmy nominees night bash. Okay, cool. Winter's coming for Kia Hama. Okay, that blimmin' fly. I don't know. I must maybe I smell really bad. It keeps trying to land on me. I'm just trying to give birth. Right, here's a dad's joke apparently. Okay, my wife asked, Am I really the only one you've ever been with? I said, Absolutely. Before you, there were all nines and tens. Ooh, that's rude. Right, that's pretty much the end of the. Why is I going to get. Oh, God. Really? You've never caught a fly yet. Mind you, Andres would do that. These are like spiders. I didn't like him, though. Pamela Anderson, she's now 57, wow, reckons she lost out on Hollywood due to lack of self-confidence. Um, she seemed quite self-confident, if I remember, back in the 90s. The Baywatch beauty and film star is now using her insecurity for a new role that is already making an Oscars buzz. Pamela stars in the last showgirl and plays a las vegas dancer being pushed out of the industry because of her age um, the 57 year old actress feels she was underestimated by hollywood but added i underestimated myself too the thing is yeah I don't know how to put this. What she could have done, she didn't do it, but she could have done. And I'm just thinking this might have been a way. Obviously, we need a time machine to make this work, but she got her success in Baywatch. She was also on, um, what's his name? The comedy show. Uh, what's that with that bloke who go, whoa, 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 whoa. And he was a home improvements. Oh, it's called Home Improvements, wasn't it? Um, yeah, so she was on Home Improvements, the comedy show. She was uh, an assistant on there. And, of course, she was on Baywatch. And she became arguably one of the most famous females in the Western world for quite a while, for a little while. She made a lot of money. So if acting was the way she wanted to go, like, you know, serious, more serious, gritty parts, then, you know, maybe learn to act. No, no, I didn't say that. Maybe she could have... Looked at getting smaller parts in really good productions, I sort of built up to it, you know. Because unfortunately, because she was so famous, the parts she would get in were because she was famous, it wasn't. Is it wrong to say that perhaps she wasn't famous for her acting ability? I don't mean that in derogatorily, but that wasn't what the press were focusing on on no one ever like Pamela Anderson future future Oscar winner although she may well win an Oscar I hope she does but that would be good because I think you know, give anyone a chance and she was an actress I mean she'd been around it for a long time with Baywatch <laughs> sorry she, she, it wasn't just about, you know, wearing a bikini or a life-saving bikini and 
jump well, running in slow motion. I mean, that's the only thing they have to stop her. Like, just stop running in slow motion and you'll be fine. But she, she could, it's a habit she got into. It's like, you can do Shakespeare, but unfortunately, you know, Juliet didn't run in slow motion and she never wore a bikini, a red bikini. So, uh, so that, that is, I think that just kind of, she got a bit roll, roll stuck or whatever it's called, role played, play, role play, Pro, role played, yeah, so, good for her, I mean she milked that cow though, didn't she? she, she milked it for all it's worth at the time, I would say, I would argue, you know, she didn't, I know it's, she got so much attention and she wanted to if she wanted to do Shakespeare, she could have done Shakespeare. You know, I think she had the range. She could have done pretty much anything she wanted. If she'd have asked to be in a movie, I imagine a lot of movie producers would have let her be in that movie just for the simple fact that that's a whole a whole uh, new audience. This fly keeps landing on my arm. Stop it. It's because I'm this side of the settee. When I'm over there, it doesn't bother me. Over here, it's almost like, well, this is where I live. This is, uh, this is my s side of the settee. Why are you over here now? Because it's my settee. Moye, Alison Moye developed her signature singing style because she had to be volu voluminous to be heard. A musician who found fame in synth pop Yazoo. She now sixty three said because because all of this there was all this shouting I had to be voluminous to be heard. Oh, because she she was in the punk she came up during the punk period. Half of under 25s believe the grandparents had a better social life than them and more friends. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, fly. Now I know why he's agitated by the fly, because it's agitating me. It's annoying me. me, me, me. Duran report in on lost LP. Duran's report. Roberto Duran. Turning a one-man act into a band has paid off a wonder horse. Singer Jacob Slater started it as a solo project, but has become a proper band since debut album Club was released in 2022. That's nice. That's... Oh, there's a big advert for the beauty box rodeo. Works put on brakes and motor. Oh, there's another book advert. First interaction again, so it's the same one. Oh, and what's this? It's a game changer. Woman's football news. Um, cool. So, that'll be... Right. What's the what's the chances? So it's it's a 2024 2025 pre season guide on sale now. Oh, so it's a once a year thing then, I guess. So I wonder how many copies it will sell. We can work it out. You know how you can work it out. All you do is you find out how many female teams there are. Divide that by the amount of people in the teams. And then you've got your number of people that's going to buy the magazine. That's it. Ooh. No, I don't think at all. Do people buy magazines now? I don't know. Oh, dear. Footy tackled. Bell boy posh geezer shock. David mocked for Cockney cleanup. Doll boy star David Jason says fans reckon he's too posh when they meet him. Well, yeah, he's 84 years old, man. 
Del Boy is 84 years old. <sighs> don't, I just don't get it. I just can't get my head around the aging, whole aging thing. Les Dawson's daughter, blimey. So, Des Lawson, she's 31, so he must have, um, Charlotte was only two when Les Dawson passed away, it's just, wow, Les Dawson was a very funny comedian, I wonder what she does. She does comedy or something. Acting cool. Uh, sprays the sails. We're getting near the end of this one. So, exquisite. Half price. Daily Star. Star on Sunday. Get your papers half price for six months. So, I'll tell you what newspapers do to four people like me. Is... They do a special offer, but they don't, they just like put only 99 pence in big letters. So I take it up to the till to pay for it, and they say, so it's 150, please. So basically, you have to collect coupons in order to get it for 99 pence. You have to like collect a week's worth of coupons. So it's not 99 pence for the, for the paper, it's actually £1.50. Right. I'm going to go now because Vinny's started barking again. So, thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye.